Hey everyone, Patrick here again with another lightsaber review. This time of Corbant's LS6 Gullwing Reveal lightsaber, his Luke Skywalker lightsaber. This is actually my first time buying anything from Corbanth, and it's also my first thin neck lightsaber that I've ever owned. So I'm, I'm, I was very excited about this. Um, I'll be going over both versions of the hilt that you can make. It comes with all the pieces to mix and match. Um, I'll say in advance though, I'm gonna go over certain components and these lightsabers, the kits are very hit, hit and miss. Some people are having real problems. Some people like me had a pretty smooth time with it. Um, I will be going over the components that can be kind of iffy when you order this. I'm not saying this to dissuade anyone from buying the kit, but I feel like you should be made aware that you may not get exactly what you were promised. Um, I think that's important for you as a consumer to know in advance the possibility of that happening. So with that being said, let's take a look at the uh, hilt. So my hilt is actually set up in the hero configuration from the uh, Last Jedi and Return of the Jedi. Um, it's very nice. Uh, the craftsmanship on this is wonderful. It's It's got some weight to it. I'm, I'm going to say that once electronics are in this and a blade is on this, this is going to be one of the best balanced lightsabers you'll own. It really does have a very comfortable weight empty, and I'm sure it's going to feel fantastic once it's installed. The we'll, we'll just start from the emitter and go on down. So the emitter has this Last Jedi detailing, which is wonderful. And you see the centerpiece here. That's uh, If you don't intend to install electronics in this, and you just want this as a display, this centerpiece, um, as is, is fine. However, there's no ability, this isn't like a blade plug you can just remove. Um, if you plan on installing electronics in this and having your LEDs up here in the uh, emitter, you're not gonna be able to have this centerpiece in. You're gonna have to use the secondary piece, which I'll show you how that goes on in a second, and buy a blade plug. And I think right now, the only place that I'm aware of where you can get a Blade plug for uh, the return of the Jedi hilt is Vader's Vault. Um, I don't know if how well it would fit into this hilt though. So what you do with the hilt, if you want to swap out between you, unscrew just like with the uh, Obi Wan hilt that Corbett does, the K4. And then in its static version, it's in its display version. This is the detailing that's in the emitter. You have these little uh, brass ring. Uh, uh, pins and some really nice detailing all, all over the um, nipple section. It's really nice, um, but at the same time, if you're displaying this, there's really no way to display this to have those showing unless you just completely leave the outer ring off, and that just doesn't look good. So, while I appreciate what uh, Corbett was trying to do with this, I just view it as kind of a useless feature, but you know, that's that's my opinion. Um, it doesn't detract from the quality of the hill at all, and it's very nice quality. So if you wanna have the blade, have this able to take a blade, you unscrew this portion from the neck, and you can have electronics in either version of the hilt. You do not have to compromise any design aesthetics for uh, install purposes, because um, light can shine through both versions of the thin neck that come with this. You just ins install um, this blade holder, which has two openings for retention screws because it is a very shallow um, depth for um, a blade you don't have a lot you don't have a lot of space there to work with and then you just put your outer ring back on and throw your blade plug or throw your blade in there and you don't lose any of this detailing now which is great that, that's what really drew me to this hill I loved that detailing in the last Jedi and the only other saber um, company I think that does that is Roman's props but his is like an entire blade plug, and you pull it out, you lose that detailing when you put a blade in there. Um, with this, you don't. You you have that detailing no matter what version of the hilt you do, and you, you won't lose it. It's very nice. Um, going down to the um, copper neck here, I believe this is real copper. Um, I can't remember from the description if it was or not, but I'm pretty confident that this is genuine copper. It looks like it, feels like it, and then, if you unscrew it and actually look down in it, 
it's copper on the inside as well. So that leads me to believe that this is solid copper because um, there would be no reason to paint the inside of this as well. So that's very, very nice. Um, this isn't just painted on. It's actually genuine copper from what I can tell. I'm going to have to go back and double check the online description, but I'm pretty sure that's actual copper. Then you get to the grenade section here, which is very nice. I like the thickness of the rings here. Um, they're not too thick. They're not too thin. They're very, very uniform and very nice and feel fantastic in your hand. They, they really do feel good. There's no sharp edges or anything on the grenade section. It feels nice. Getting to the, uh, to the control box here, you'll notice that this portion here, which comes off, it's held in by magnets, but you can do other things to adhere it if you want. This is uh, brass and not copper. Some people aren't gonna like that. I personally love it. I, I think it just adds a real um, rustic quality to the hilt. And it, it's just really aesthetically pleasing to me to see that brass there. It makes the hill a little bit more intriguing. And then you have the um, control box with the arrows. These arrows do light up and this kit includes the electronics to make this blank, which are battery operated. Now, obviously, if you're gonna install this yourself, you're not gonna use those base electronics. But if you're just strictly displaying this, this is just a shelf queen, or you're giving this as a gift to someone who doesn't plan on installing it, I really do feel this activation box was just a stroke of genius on uh, Corbin's part. It works phenomenally, and I'll show you how that works. So this back button actually activates the LED. And first setting it's blinking, you press the back button again, and it'll go to stationary. This front button changes the color. Now, that's supposed to be blue. My, my blue LED, for some reason, <laughs> doesn't work. Um, but that it's supposed to be blue, and then it goes to red, and then back to green, and you press this back button again, it turns off. So press it once, it blinks, press it again, stationary, press it again, it turns off. Um, I must have, I did actually drop the card that has the LEDs and everything, and I'm pretty sure I broke the blue LED. Um, that's my own screw up, because everything worked fine at first until I dropped it. Um, I think this whole activation box section was just a real, innovative part on core balance's part a lot of people love luke hilts that have those blinking leds and as far as i'm aware the only other time you could buy a lightsaber that had that feature was from vader's vault which is ungodly expensive and they no longer offer that hilt <clears throat> so that's a really nice touch and now if you want to custom install this you don't have to drill holes or anything and you don't have to go out and buy clear acrylic these are clear leds will shine through them um once again, I think the only other place you can buy this hilt is Roman's Props, and you can also buy a um, inspired Return of the Jedi hilt from Cyberforge. But neither one of those comes with um, the blinking LEDs, and to get them to blink takes some heavy customization. So that's nice that that's already done and ready for you. So even if you put custom electronics in this and you don't want to use the base ones included, you that's one less thing you have to do you don't have to drill holes you don't have to buy clear acrylic and shape them it's already done for you i think that's really fantastic um and also the electronic components in the box were very easy for me to put together i am not mechanically inclined at all and i had a very easy time putting this box together and it works just fine i do want to point out you may notice that when i press my buttons they don't swivel all around like everyone else's. If you watch any other YouTube video that I'm aware of um, where someone reviews this, their buttons are wiggling all around. Even in Corbin's official video, you know, showing this off, his buttons are all screwy. Um, the reason mine aren't, and I'm telling you this so that you don't buy this and then freak out when they're all loosey-goosey. Um, well, I just said that. <laughs> but um, I'm telling you this because I did that by mistake. I got, when I was doing the glue components in this hilt, um, I hate working with glue, I got really overzealous with the glue and glued my buttons down to such a degree that I couldn't press them and I couldn't get anything to work. And that was my fault. I really screwed up with glue, so I took a pair of pliers and just wiggled these buttons to where they were just barely loose enough to where I could press them to get the lights to come on. But there's so much pressure from the glue and they're so adhered to their tactile switches that there's almost zero give. Like if I take them and force them to wiggle, they wiggle. 
but just pressing them down, they don't. So don't buy this expecting them to be stationary like mine. Um, they're not going to be. Everyone else I have seen, theirs has been just completely free moving. Um, so be aware of that. And I know that's going to bother some people. And that's why I'm telling you in advance. And then you take this paw off. Once again, it's held by magnets. And this is what the inside looks like. You have your two watch batteries in there. Powering this up. Which, once again, you if you're custom installing this, you won't need. But if you're just buying this strictly for a shelf queen or as a gift, I think it's a really great feature. And when you finish building that, you do feel a sense of accomplishment. Especially if you're like me and you're not mechanically inclined. You don't do installs. It... it Kind of boost your confidence a little bit and then you get to the pommel section and i do want to talk about the finish here you'll notice that it goes from a shiny i believe aluminum to steel to aluminum to steel back to the aluminum that's because these steel components um and these sections of the hilt here here and here have magnetic um, magnetic components here and here for the crystal reveal and here for the galling reveal this may bother some people that the finish varies like this. And it's not as bad as the camera makes it appear. It's actually significantly better in person. But I know that bothers some people. Um, personally, I don't mind it. I actually like it. it. Once again, it makes the Saber a little bit more intriguing to look at. I never did like how Luke Skywalker, like, uh, Luke Skywalker Saber was just black and then straight silver. It just looked really odd. So this kind of adds something extra to look at. And I will be going over the crystal reveal features here in a second. Um, and then you get to the pommel section. You'll notice that right here at the base of the pommel, on the actual prop and on almost every other version you can buy, there's a significant, um, I don't know what you call it, indentation around, around in this ring portion. But there isn't much of one here. Um, that is a little wonky looking to me and most people. Now, when you put this in the V2 configuration, the section that replaces this portion for the V2 adds some girth and it does get that drop again. But in its hero configuration, it does look a little weird that it just straight transitions and there's not much of an indentation there. And then you have your, uh, tri ring and your tri ring I don't know how to do like threading to where you can get the pommel to rest where you want it to rest. Um, but that doesn't really matter because on my particular kit, the tri ring ended up where I wanted it anyway. But on some people, if that's going to vary, your, your tri ring is going to end up in all various different places. It just depends on the kit you get. And with the tri ring, if you want this in the V2 configuration, this kit does not include a D ring. And the tri ring is pre installed. It comes this way. So if you want a D ring installed, you're going to have to buy a D ring yourself and go through the process of removing the tri ring and adding the D ring. So be aware that the kit does not include a D ring and this is pre installed for you. There's no second pommel with a D ring or anything like that. And then on the bottom, you have your sound holes, which I think are very well done. The sound holes on this, I hate. Some sabers, like I, I don't really like the 2.0 kits, the graphics kits, where it's just a bunch of random holes all over the place. Um, but this is really nice. It's a very uniform look. It's not too distracting. And then you turn it on the side because it's kind of indented in there in this little ring portion. So it's, it's actually really nice. Uh, I rather like it. Overall, in its hero configuration, it's a, it's a very wonderful prop. Um, and then you have your crystal reveal functions. Uh, in the V2 configuration, you only have two crystal reveal uh, options. In the hero configuration, you have three. So your first crystal reveal option is down here towards the pommel. You twist and pull, and that's your first option. And I should note that these opening portions vary from person to person. Some people have to yank and pry to get those open. Mine's rather smooth. Um, I got very lucky with my hill. I haven't had any of the problems other people have. You twist, you lock it in place. Now, I won't be using the crystal reveal on this bottom portion, so I'm just going to have my set screw tightened to the point to where this doesn't twist. But for the sake of this review, I'm keeping it loose. And then you have your gall wing reveal. Now, mine has almost no gap, which is what was promised. He, he prom uh, Corbett promised in his video that the gap would only be in the prototype. I did not receive hardly any gap. You need a little bit of a gap to get your nail in there to get the doors open, but... It's barely noticeable on mine, but this is another feature that varies from 
kit to kit. Some people are getting giant ass gaps. I'm talking big gaps. Um, I'm very fortunate that I don't and I have the magnets and everything installed on mine. So once again, be aware, don't come screaming at me when you say, oh, my lightsaber is nothing like yours. I have a giant gap and stuff. Well, I'm warning you now, you may get a gap. Um, so to get these doors open, you just get your nail in there and pull. And this is your going option. And I have my crystal in there that comes with the kit. I'll show you what that's like all lit up and stuff. Um, the going doors, some people aren't really ecstatic about. I personally don't mind them. I'm probably going to have mine glued closed. The only crystal reveal function I have a need for is the grenade section one that I'll show you in a second. But I can see some cool innovative stuff being done with these Gullwing doors. I can see some cool display options, some cool kill key um, accessibility there, um, and um, sound cards and stuff like that, making it even easier to where you don't have to unscrew stuff and pry things apart. Um, I can see this being used for fan films, where people are tinkering with their lightsaber or building their lightsaber. I can see some uses for this. Now, if you want to duel with these sabers in either configuration, I would say the hero version light dueling. If you're going to keep the going door function, if you don't intend on gluing that down or bolting it down, um, I think it could handle light dueling, dueling, possibly medium dueling. But you got to keep in mind, you've got some parts up here that could possibly break off um, with some medium to heavy contact dueling. So light dueling, I think, would be fine for this version. Um, cosplay, display, and um, stunt dueling I think would be fine. But if you intend on keeping the going doors you know, functional, I would not recommend medium or heavy dueling. And I would not recommend medium heavy dueling really in the hero configuration at all just because of the way the box is. Um, that being said, we have one last crystal reveal function, which is the grenade, uh, grenade section. So you twist, pull, and twist to lock. And my crystal is up there. Now, when you get this kit, the crystal is supposed to have two magnets in the base. One completes the circuit, so that way the electronics work, and the other is supposed to magnetize it down in the pommel. However, me and almost my, myself and almost everyone else I've seen who have tried putting both those magnets on, the secondary magnet interferes with the circuit. It acts as a kill key and shuts the electronics off in the crystal. So what I did, since I couldn't get that feature to work, um, I just kind of pressure fit mine to where it sits up here. And when I have this installed, I'll have a proper crystal chamber with a real quartz crystal and stuff like that installed. But the purpose of this review and stuff like that, I'm, I have it placed here. And then you just twist that shut. Um, to get your crystal to work, I'm actually going to take it out now to show you how that works. Now mine's pressure fit up here, so I kind of got to pry it down. Oh, and one last thing I want to talk about with the crystal reveal functions. Um, I don't know if this is a, a thing that's happened in every kit, but in my kit, these rail sections um, up here are sharp. <laughs> the, the rail sections up here are incredibly sharp. I actually sliced my finger open putting this together um, with this up here. My crystal got stuck up here, and I put my hand in there, and I sliced my finger open. So be very careful of that. Um, there's no other sharp parts anywhere else on the hill, but right here I did, ooh, yeah, it's like a razor. It's actually very, very, very sharp, um, which, uh, be careful. Um, I have a new scar to add to my hand now to go along with all the others I got. <laughs> okay, so this is your crystal reveal, um, or your crystal that goes for your crystal reveal. Now when you get it, you get this clear acrylic piece that's supposed to go over this section. Mine is off, not because it doesn't work, but because, remember what I said about getting overzealous with the glue? There's a little red switch that comes with this to go over the tactile switch. And this was the first component I glued. I made it to where I can't put that red tactile switch on there because of the uh, glue that's adhered around the base of this tactile switch. So you can't put this clear acrylic because you can't reach the base tactile switch that's under there. You need that red addition. So that's not a problem with the kit. That was my own screw up. Now for the uh, crystal, your battery goes in here. This is battery powered as well. And your tactile switch is right there. And you press it and this whole section would light up. And if you had the clear acrylic piece over it, this is what it would look like. 
and then you have your crystal and it has just like the activation box it cycles between blue green and red which is neat it's neat um so while we're on the topic of the crystal I have I've been pretty much praising the saber of the wazoo. I like everything about it. When it comes to the crystal, it's a good concept. I get what Corbanth was attempting to do. However, the aesthetic application of it, the actual execution, is lacking significantly. There's nothing wrong with the electronics themselves. The LED is nice and bright. I mean, look how bright that is. That I mean, these are some bright LEDs. But the actual aesthetic look of the crystal itself, to me, feels very cheap and very gimmicky. You have this beautiful, gorgeous kit with these high quality pieces that feels nice in your hand, everything like that. The electronics in the box, I think, is a stroke of genius. I love them. They're really well done, um, especially for, you know, if you want this as a shelf clean, that's fantastic. But this actual crystal portion here just looks so cheap. When I see this, what this reminds me of is if you ever go to a Hobby Lobby and you go to the kids section, you have the little light up crystals and light up toys and stuff, or it's something you would find at a county fair or a big parade that you find at booths. It looks really cheap. Um, the crystal, um, it looks worse in person. The camera is kind of blur, you know, blurring out some of the detail there. It looks so obviously plastic. And just bad. The LED's fine. That's fine. But this portion here and this little doodad here of all the blinking lights, it just looks really tacky. I don't like it. I feel like it brings the overall quality of the kit down a little. Because you have, you know, the crystal is one of the first things you put together. Uh, one of the first things you put together, actually. Um, it's the first electronic component you put together going by the instructions. So... You know, it kind of makes you worried about what's to come because this just looks so bad. It, it really does. And the exact same crystal aesthetic is going to be applied to his new cross cord saber and his crystal reveal graphic sabers. Once again, great, uh, great concept. I appreciate the concept. I just, I feel like this could have been done more unique for the money you pay for this hilt. Now, I'm not expecting like a genuine quartz crystal in here. But I feel like something better than this could have been done or just not included. Um, the LED function on the control box I, for this particular hilt that allows a function like that with the arrows, I once again, I think it's a stroke of genius. But the actual crystal element, I feel like, can be left out. And him adding these things like the galling reveal and now the core, uh, now the uh, um, cross guard saber that's going to have a whole plate that can be removed. Um, yeah, you can bolt those things down, but you're kind of making these sabers a little less dual-worthy doing that. Um, there, There is a market for people who want crystal reveals and stuff like that. I personally am not a big fan of crystal reveals, although I do want one in my Luke hilt. I always wanted a Luke hilt with a crystal reveal, and I'm pretty sure this is the only hilt I'll ever put a crystal reveal in. But the base system that comes is, is just... It's the one downside of this entire kit. It looks bad. It feels bad. It looks really cheap and gimmicky. Once again, I appreciate the concept. I just, execution's lacking. Um, and I know a lot of people are having problems with their crystals. A lot of people are getting crystals that just plain don't work no matter what they do. Um, they, they're they breaking easily. I'm a, I am always get afraid I'm going to break this. Um, it feels like the smallest touch. It feels like it feels like the type of thing that if you look at it wrong, it's going to break on you. So be aware of that when you buy this kit. That while a teenager or a kid, you know, because some parents buy stuff like this for their kids, um, they they may appreciate it. But a real like serious collector or lightsaber enthusiast or prop enthusiast or Star Wars enthusiast. This, they're going to look at this and be like, what is this piece of crap? Um, I know I'm being really harsh on it. Um, but once again, for the quality of everything else, to really drop the ball on something that could have been awesome. This feature could have been the shining piece of this hilt. But it's just so lackluster in terms of how it aesthetically looks and feels and how it's put together. And it kind of upsets me that now when I decide to buy 
a cross guard saber in the future because it'll probably be a core bamf one because i just like how it's actually aesthetically looking over all the hilt i'm gonna get this again um i feel like it, don't don't include it or refine it a little it, it needs work um but that's my only negative about the hilt so let's put that aside um so as i said you can build two versions of this hilt and i'm about to show you how you do that so the first thing you want to do is change out the copper piece here, the copper neck for the notched V2 version. Now, I did not have a weathered paint job done on mine because I'm keeping it in the hero configuration. So my um, parts are all shiny and copper and new and nice. But for an extra $30, you can have Corbant uh, do an authentic Return of the Jedi V2 paint scheme for you, which looks very nice. I've, I've seen videos and pictures of it. It looks very nice. Um, I just, that's not a particular aesthetic that speaks to me. Um, I very much am in love with the hero version of this prop. So you take out your smooth copper neck here and put in your notched one. And all these pieces are interchangeable and threaded. So you can even mix and match. If you want a V2 style copper neck, but a hero activation box or vice versa, you know, the possibilities are endless. Um, I would strongly recommend that you buy the kit as is uh, um, if you're very on the, on the fence about what version you want and don't pay for the uh, V2 paint scheme because once you get that V2 paint scheme, you're stuck with that version. You, you know, you can't really make this a hero again as far as I'm aware. And then you take off this top portion of the box and there's two screws in there and that's what the magnets adhere to for the uh, circuit card. So you undo those screws and this entire box removes off of the hill. Oh, didn't undo that one all the way. And then you have this uh, secondary plate here that once you take the screws out, comes off. Um, you can screw this plate back on there and I think you're actually supposed to when you make it the V2, this uh, plate right here. However, I found it's easier to get the Graflex clamp on here if you just remove this entirely. Um, you don't, it doesn't really hinder or help you if it's on there. So I, I just take mine off. And I'm not keeping mine in the V2 configuration, so I don't need to you know, make sure everything's proper on this. So get your clamp, get that ready. So you wanna screw your pommel. And then what's really neat is that instead of just putting a screw hole in this section of the uh, lightsaber for the little added greebly that's on the V2, he actually included an, an entire additional piece that has both the um, random hole that's on the actual prop, but also the little greebly there. That's very nice. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting to get this piece with just a couple holes drilled in so you could put the little greebly anywhere you wanted, and that would be the kit. Um, it does not clarify in the description online that you're going to get two of these pieces near the pommel. So that was a pleasant surprise. So unscrew your um, retention screw, take that off. And now you want to put the V2 portion on there. And make sure you get the hole of the retention screw lined up with the slot. Oh, wait, before I do that, uh, you got to slide your clamp, card on for, uh, clamp on first. So just slide that on. I found it's easiest to slide it from the bottom. You can remove the grenade section but that's a little bit of additional work that no one's got time for. And then put your uh, circuit card in there. And this does come with a really nice, accurate V2 version of the circuit card, um, which is very nice. Uh, I, I deeply appreciate that detail. Now you can put this bottom portion on. Make sure it's lined up with the crystal reveal, reveal section. And then screw your pommel back on. Okay. And there you have the V2. This particular version of the Helt, I would say could handle medium and possibly even heavy dueling. It's so much more secure down here. You don't have the galling feature because the clamp covers it. You don't have any little buns up here or anything you're gonna lose. Um, the clamp holds everything in place. This version's actually heavier too. 
So as I said earlier, this secondary option with the low gribri is thicker than the hero version. So now you have this drop here. And the reason why it's thicker is so that way it can be in line with the Graflex clamp. Um, Cause you're putting this Graflex clamp over the main body. So it adds a little thickness. So this piece is thicker to kind of keep it more of a smooth transition. You don't just have this clamp and then a drop. Um, so I appreciate that. It adds some weight cause these are all steel pieces. Um, it adds some real gravitas and weight to it. This is heavier than the hero. And this is probably, if you want a dueling saber or a contact saber of any kind, this is definitely the version you want. Um, it just really, really, really is the uh, perfect version for uh, dueling. Um, once again, if you want the V2, you gotta buy your own D-ring and take out the tri-ring and install it and stuff like that. Um, but it's very, very nice. You got the extended Return of the Jedi lever, which is accurate. Um, you do keep the same detailing at the top. Um, I don't have this middle section back in there. Um, but you have that detailing in no matter what version you do. I don't foresee that bothering anyone. Um, from what I've gathered and seen and read, a lot of people like this added detailing. They added it in The Force Awakens and Last Jedi. Um, so I really do think that this is the perfect version if you want an installed combat ready hilt. I don't know how well this thin neck can withstand dueling, so I'm not going to say heavy. Um, you might be able to get away with it, but I think it could definitely take medium dueling. It's very, very nice. And you don't, uh, you lose the galling feature, but you don't lose your upper crystal reveal feature. And you don't lose your bottom crystal reveal feature. You keep all those. So that's cool. You can still have a crystal reveal no matter what version you do. And then this little screw, I'm sure someone out there is going to modify this. It just screws out, but I'm sure someone can modify it to where this is a kill key. And I think it would be a very clever uh, kill key. Um, I personally don't like kill keys. I like deep sleep modes or kill keys that are hidden. But this this could be clever. And then you don't have to worry about random greebly gaining your way when you're dealing with it. Overall, the hilt is for what you pay. Because the uh, Corbin's products aren't overly expensive, like Roman's props or Vader's vault. They're very reasonably priced. And what's great, they're kits. You can really mix and match. You can toy with them. You can get a feel for what you want to do. Um, there are some people who have kind of blown up comments in other videos and Facebook posts and stuff like that about how they weren't expecting a kit. And they ordered the product and then watched a video review after the fact before they have received the product and they're all pissy because, oh, I, I wanted a completed hill. I didn't know it was a kit. The description says it's a kit and it says it, you can build any version of the hilt. So keep that in mind. This isn't a completed product. You have to put elements together. You have to build it. Um, there is also one final surprise I was not expecting. So say you like these V2 elements, but you don't want the V2 paint job. You're very close to having a V3. And for those who don't know, the V3 prop was essentially almost exactly the same as the V2, except it had the hero color scheme. It had the copper portion up here, it had the silver portion down here, it had some additional greeblies. It didn't have the longer lever, it had the regular Graflex lever. But this includes, if you take the clamp, uh, the circuit card, you have the V2 option, with all its little uh, details there, my camera's being wonky. But if you flip it around, you get the V3 version. You get just a, a typical uh, card. I wasn't expecting that, and that's not uh, shown in the description online or anything like that. So switch it around to keep this color scheme. You now essentially have a V3, which some people like as well. And the only other company I'm aware of that sells a V3 style prop is Roman's Props. Um, once again, Roman's props, while they're absolutely fantastic, I've actually recently ordered their MK1 Saber and will be reviewing that when I get it. Their products are just obscenely expensive. So this is a really good alternative. It's a really nice, solid built hilt. Keep in mind that some people are going to have better look than others with the quality of the machining and stuff like that. Some people are going to have gaps. Some people's electronics aren't going to work. So just be aware of that. Um, and be prepared for it. Don't be too freaked out if something isn't working properly or you have a gap or something like that. Um, 
But overall, as far as I'm concerned, and as far as you know, I can say for my hilt, it really is a fantastic, fantastic piece of art. I consider lightsaber making to be an art. It takes a lot of effort and creativity to get these materials and stuff to function properly. Um, and on a scale of 1 to 10, I would give this a 9. I'm going to dock a point because that crystal chamber is just a really poorly executed in my opinion. But, or not the crystal chamber, the, the crystal itself. But overall, everything else, it, it really, really is a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic prop. I can't say that enough. I thoroughly love it. And I can't wait to um, get my MK1 Obi-Wan Saber so I can review that and then compare the two thin neck versions, which I'm excited for. But that's all I got for you. I would highly recommend this product. And I wish you the best. See ya.